Planning for retirement can be pretty daunting. From the moment you get your first job, you're immediately and constantly reminded of the fact that you can't do this for the rest of your life. And from that point, the pressure to begin preparing for retirement starts to build. For some people, retirement saving seems pretty simple. All you have to do is take a portion of what you earn every month and just put in a retirement plan and just keep an eye on it. But this isn't necessarily the entire story. For one, the impacts of the economy can easily affect the value of your retirement savings. Also, things like job loss, injuries, and many other situations can affect your ability to earn and save, and this will definitely put a damper on your ability to put money away for retirement. This is why you need to have a reliable and effective strategy when it comes to retirement savings. And that is exactly what the 4% rule is all about offering the groundwork for your savings and ensuring that you have the right approach towards this critical part of your life. In this video, we'll be looking at the 4% rule and what it means pertaining to retirement savings. Or if you're looking to retire earlier in life, such as those on their fire journeys, this would also provide a great framework for you to follow. We'll cover what the 4% rule actually means, how to implement the rule, and how to work around some of the challenges that you might encounter. So what is the 4% rule? Retirement is something that we all look forward to subconsciously. But if you ask anyone that's been saving money for their retirement recently, they'd tell you that doing so isn't necessarily as easy as you might think. The 4% rule is a strategy that can help make the process of saving for retirement both easy and effective. It tries to establish a comfortable and safe threshold for retirement and withdrawals. And it states that you should be able to comfortably survive on 4% of your money in investments when you're in your first year of retirement. From there, you should be able to increase or decrease that amount in order to account for inflation as time goes on. The 4% rule first became popular in the mid 90s when research found that if you withdrew 4% for every year in retirement, there was a high chance that your money would be able to last the entire span of your retirement period. In fact, the entire concept was attributed to Bill Bengen, a financial advisor based in Southern California who developed the concept around that time. The rule was developed with the use of historical data on bond and stock returns over the 50 year period that lasted between 1926 and 1976, with a special focus on market downturns, such as those in 1929 and the 1970s. Bengen concluded that even during market downturns, there was no historical case where a 4% annual withdrawal rate exhausted a retirement portfolio in less than 33 years. Fun fact, even though he created the 4% rule, Bengen has actually criticized what he believed to be an oversimplification of the concept by many people in the past. Primarily, Bengen claimed that the 4% rule was based on a worst case scenario and that raising that number to 5% would most likely be more realistic. Many financial planners have raised doubts that the 4% rule is even still possible. The uncertainty around pension payments, pensioners living longer, rampant inflation in recent years, among many other factors, would all require retirement savings to last much longer. Due to these, many financial planners actually believe that a number closer to 3% might be a more comfortable number for retirees to withdraw each year from their retirement accounts. Still, whether you're working with the 3 or the 4% rule, it's important to note that these are more of rules of thumb for how you should spend your money in retirement. They're not explicit rules for how to save for it. Still, keeping tabs on how much money you'll be using in your retirement years will help you work backwards to determine how much you'll need to save in the first place. Now, I know it sounds pretty easy. With the 4% rule, all you have to do is make sure you're not taking more than 4% of the money in your retirement savings every year. But as you can imagine, this isn't quite as easy as it seems. There are several factors that will affect your ability to adhere to this rule. The first of these is market conditions. Of course, the first thing you need to consider is the effect of the market on your portfolio. When Bingen analyzed the data that led him to creating this rule, he especially focused on the effects. Saving money for retirement is great, but you need to remember that when the market experiences a downturn, the value of your retirement account also takes a dip. And the longer and more severe that dip lasts, the more difficult it is for you to adhere to the 4% rule. Another important factor that tends to really affect people's ability to handle the 4% rule is inflation. As you can imagine, the amount of money anyone would have needed to retire back in the day isn't the same amount today. And the reason for that is inflation. The value of money tends to decline over time. And this means the cost to retire, such as housing, food, and utilities, are also likely to increase. As these values change, retirement requirements also change. And this means that most likely, the amount of money you would need to take 
out of your retirement savings these days will be considerably more than what you would have needed decades ago. As a result, you'd need to increase your savings during your working years. And finally, the composition of your retirement portfolio will also affect your ability to adhere to this rule. Remember, retirement accounts generally invest in things like stocks and bonds. As such, the performance of these assets will determine how well your portfolio performs in the first place. Over time, these performances will dictate how well you're able to save for retirement, as well as how much you're able to withdraw from your account. Next, let's examine how you can kind of understand what you'll need for your retirement savings. This is usually the biggest issue most people face. I mean, how do you know how much you'll need to retire when you're still actively working? Well, there's a quote that says you should usually start things with the end in mind. And when it comes to retirement saving, you kind of want to apply this rule. To figure out how much money you'll need to save before you can retire, the first thing you'd want to do is estimate how much money you'll be spending every year after you retire. To do this, think of a rough estimate of how much your living costs are each year. Things like rent or mortgage, healthcare, groceries, medication, transport, utilities, this kind of thing. For this, you want to kind of remember that you're not making an exhaustive list. Expenses will differ, especially when you consider the type of lifestyle you want when you retire. But you can at least use these spending categories to start thinking about some of the costs you've been incurring in retirement. Once you add these costs, you can then account for some discretionary spending money or some expenses that might pop up unannounced. Imagine you plan to spend about $60,000 annually with about $10,000 to cover unexpected expenses. This means you've got a $70,000 annual spending budget. Next, you'll also want to consider the amount of money you'd be getting through benefits like the pension. If you expect to get about $15,000 a year, this will then add to your general pot. Add into this any other investments that pay a recurring passive income, such as rental property, royalties, or through company stock. So now that you have an idea of how much is coming in and going out, you can now apply the 4% rule to discover the total amount of money you'll need to have saved up before retiring. For the example I gave, you'd simply take your annual budgeted expenses of $70,000 a year, subtract the $15,000 of annual income and be left with $55,000, which is required to be withdrawn each year. You then divide the $55,000 by 4% leaving you with the required portfolio size of just under $1.4 million. In other words, $1.4 million will last you about 30 years if you withdraw $55,000 a year. Pretty easy, right? Now that we understand how to handle the 4% rule, let's move on and check out how to actually implement it. To be fair, there's really no one-size-fits-all approach to this, but what you want to focus on instead is a few important rules. First is to diversify your portfolio. Remember to build the right portfolio for your retirement savings. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're focusing on the right assets that can help deliver long-term gains and help you compound your wealth. The performance of different asset classes can vary significantly year after year. Diversification allows you to have a stake across several asset classes, benefiting when one does well, but reducing risk in case another does poorly. The longevity of your retirement portfolio value is key here. Second is to always tweak things. Like every other investment, you need to always keep an eye on your portfolio and how it's performing. If you need to make adjustments to your withdrawal and spending strategies, then feel free to do just that. At the end of the day, remember the North Star metric and focus on that. Third is to never think you can go it alone. Remember, no one really builds wealth on their own. So if it means working with a financial planner or advisor, do that. Just make sure your portfolio is properly managed and assembled. Now you might be asking yourself, even with the many changes in the financial landscape, how is it that people have still been following the 4% rule when it comes to their retirement? Well, generally, the 4% rule has several interesting benefits. One of those is the fact that it's actually been pretty accurate over time. Remember that Bengen worked through five decades of financial records and data to arrive at this rule. And over time, it's been pretty accurate. So it's actually based on solid work that professionals have handled. At the time, the 4% is actually pretty flexible. Like I said earlier, a lot of experts have critiqued the original rule and presented possible tweaks. So if you feel like the economic conditions and things like inflation have rendered that 4% peg obsolete, you can then adapt your calculations and your strategy until you find a peg that works for you. Finally, you also need to consider that working with this strategy tends to give a lot of prospective retirees peace of mind and assurance that they will be taken care of when they do hang things up. The 4% rule has been trusted over time as a good target with many proponents around the world. Still, everything that's got a good side will have a few points to the downside. And when it comes to the 4% rule, there are a few things. Of course, the biggest critique of the strategy has been the 
fact that the 4% number might not necessarily apply to current economic conditions. But when you consider the fact that this peg can always be changed, then you can see that this strategy is pretty flexible. Another criticism is that the strategy might not necessarily be able to account for things like unforeseen circumstances. Medical bills, family commitments, and much more tend to creep up on people and they tend to eat into the 4% you already have saved and have planned to spend. This is why you need to be very careful about your calculations and make sure you're not caught off guard. And finally, inflation has been rampant lately and we can't always be sure the Reserve Bank will do what it needs to to keep inflation down in the low single digits. As such, calculating your required retirement funds using the 4% rule won't necessarily accommodate such cases, as your living costs could be much higher than initially predicted. At the same time, you could always look into supplementary strategies that can possibly help you manage your spending. So if you feel like the 4% rule doesn't work, then feel free to make some changes. At the end of the day, the goal is for you to have a happy, wealthy retirement. And for that to happen, you need to be very deliberate about your calculations and how you're handling your money. Once you do, then you're very well on your way for sure. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.